Game streaming is a technology I largely ignored since I had no interest in it. And when Stadia attempted to make a splash, it was such a loud, weird, and poorly executed splash that it alienated me from the idea completely. Until now. You see, I have a MacBook for GarageBand, and occasionally I get these little pop-ups informing me that Steam games were ready to stream. Two weeks ago, during a night when I was having difficulty sleeping, I thought to myself, screw it, let's see what this thing is. And things haven't been the same since. In short, if your computer is on, Steam Link will stream a video of your computer to a device of your choosing, whether it be laptop or phone, really just anything that supports Steam, with as little input lag as possible, so that you can functionally play your games wherever you want. I want to show you some of the games that I've been trying with this technology. The last week or so, I've used a 10-foot cable so that I can play Destiny on my MacBook with a controller in bed late at night. You could say I was late night playing video games. I had my stream quality set to 720p and 60 frames per second with the stream priority set to speed so that it would always try to make sure I had as little input delay as possible, even if that meant that the stream would occasionally dip in quality and start to just kind of look like a playable YouTube video. I found the experience to be incredibly comfortable. I think some of that was definitely due to the controller actually being plugged into the PC where the game was natively being played, but the input delay felt acceptably minimal. As the action began heating up, the game would tend to lose some of its clarity and become very fuzzy looking, but I found an easy solution to help kind of mitigate this. I would turn down the graphics settings to low so that there was less foliage and less shadows on screen. I'd then turn off anisotropic filtering so that the ground appeared less textured, and it actually ended up making the game look more visually appealing through the stream. The reason why, I think, is due to less detail on the screen, which means less detail for the stream to just crunch and compress into 720p. As weird as it sounds, less was more when it came to a 720p game stream. I also made sure to turn off depth of field and motion blur since those were unfortunately huge culprits in stream artifacting, and it's kind of a shame because I do like those in Destiny. I did, however, run into an issue that made the game's PvP mode crucible rather hard to play. Every five or so minutes, the stream would hitch and buckle for about four straight seconds before running smoothly again, albeit very pixely. Since this weird hitching could happen at very bad times, I couldn't reliably play Crucible since the stream could, at any moment, decide to run like a poop from a butt in the middle of a firefight. I typically stuck to PvE content whenever I played through Steam Link. Also, Crucible just isn't as much fun with Stasis. It was time to test out the phone, and I really wanted to play something shootery on the phone. Unfortunately, Destiny is a bit too complex with how many button presses and abilities it requires from the player. Due to the simplicity of classic Halo controls, it made the games an excellent test subject for iPhone touch controls. Conveniently, my pharmacy called and said that a prescription was ready for me to pick up, so I hopped into the car and drove to my local pharmacy, phone in pocket, and curious to see how well the stream would work over distance. When I arrived at the pharmacy, I found a corner to hide in and tried to get the stream working, but to my horror, it didn't work. Nothing I tried could get it to work, so I just got my meds and begrudgingly returned home, only to find that once I was connected to my home's Wi-Fi, suddenly it was ready to start streaming. Unwilling to admit defeat, I did not go inside and instead sat on my front porch and loaded up Halo 3 on my phone as a good test run. I booted up one of my favorite Halo missions, Sierra 117, and began playing. It was... Good. Surprisingly good. Something I had never considered was how well aim assist would actually assist the awkwardness of touch controls. As I stumbled and fumbled my way through encounters, I came to understand that some limitations did exist, though. 
Part of why I play Bumper Jumper on consoles is because in order to jump with normal controls, you'd have to temporarily take your thumb off of the right stick, the right stick being used for aiming. This means that you can't hop around like a madman while also precisely aiming at targets at the same time. On iPhone here, there's a very similar issue, but it's with shooting. In order to fire my gun, I'd need to take my thumb off of the little aiming circle so that I could press the little shooting circle. I eventually developed this habit of aiming generally at the target, and then just praying that the aim assist would handle it from there as I spammed the little trigger icon to fire my gun. This problem was actually made worse when dual wielding. Pressing one fire button while aiming was hard enough, but two fire buttons while aiming? It was pretty much undoable, and I quickly gave up trying to make it work. All in all, I was struggling to play, even on easy difficulty, but considering that I was playing Halo 3's first mission on my phone with little input delay well outside, the clumsy controls were acceptable. I hopped over to Halo 2, which had much more aggressive aim assist than Halo 3, curious to see if it would feel a little bit better. Unfortunately, I ran into issues with Halo 2. Halo 2 on the Master Chief Collection is not that great in terms of stability, so it's hard to tell if the hitching I was experiencing was due to the stream being unstable, or just the Master Chief Collection kinda being glitchy, but I found it much harder to play this one. I got extremely curious about how multiplayer games would work, and I actually tried searching for a match. Slayer or objective game types were not something I was equipped for on my phone, but perhaps a simple party mode would be okay. As long as it wasn't Dino Blasters. Dino Blasters was a nightmare. Not only did I have to move and aim, I had to fire and aim and hold down a button to fly, which meant while flying, I couldn't make small course corrections in my aim without letting go of that button and crashing to my death. I managed to be killed many times, kill myself many times, hit a single opponent once in the whole match with a non-lethal strike, and the match concluded with me having negative two points iPhone multiplayer just wasn't gonna cut it. Feeling like I was kinda done with the Halo experience on mobile, I went inside and loaded up my MacBook and plugged in a mouse. Let's see how input delay feels when using a mouse on the Mac. Destiny's input delay felt really good, but it cheated a little bit since the controller was plugged into the computer where the game was natively being played. Let's see how a game feels when the inputs are being handled from the MacBook. There was a big test going on for some new Halo 3 maps, so I booted up the Insider build of the Master Chief Collection and launched multiplayer. This was a miserable experience. It felt like there was input delay, mouse acceleration, and I couldn't see anything because of the artifacting. Sometimes it felt as if the stream was just ignoring micro mouse inputs from me and I was unable to keep myself alive for any extended length of time. Over the course of my play session, I grew to try to avoid precision weapons because there was no way I'd be accurate enough to reliably land headshots. Whenever I saw red on my minimap coming towards me, my heart rate would elevate, and I would click and drag my aim all over the screen until inevitably dying in an oblivion of fuzz, artifacts, and gunfire. Throughout the weekend, I played the MCC test flights like this, and I only got two kills that I felt extremely proud of. It just was not good for aiming, and what sucks is I had Steam linked some Deus Ex earlier that week, and it actually felt pretty good. But I have a theory on why that is. A single player experience is much slower than an online experience. Lightning fast reflexes and split second judgments are less required in a single player game, so it probably wasn't that Deus Ex was smoother than the Master Chief Collection, but more so that it didn't really bother me. The enemies were more predictable, and overall I felt I had more control over the situation despite my limitations. Isn't that interesting? Probably not, but I thought it was. The final, ultimate challenge I put the Steam Link service through was Sonic Generations, which is a lightning-fast game, has motion blur, and requires split-second judgment making. And I'd be playing it on my phone.
Sonic was turned into an uncontrollable monster on my tiny phone. One wrong flick of my finger and he'd go flying off an edge to his pixely demise. I managed to stumble my way through two stages before finally surrendering on the phone streaming experience for good. Since I couldn't actually figure out how to connect an Xbox or PlayStation controller to my phone, this probably wouldn't be a viable way for me to play games going forward, but I was okay with that. Steam Link is a really cool idea and one that I found a lot of value in. I'm gonna continue streaming Destiny from the comfort of my bed, and until I can figure out how to connect a controller to my phone, I'm probably never gonna touch Steam Link again there. Xbox is currently developing a service called xCloud, which I initially brushed off due to Stadia souring me on the whole idea. But after playing my games with Steam Link, I'm more willing to give xCloud a chance. You know what made Stadia fail for me? It wasn't the alienating smugness of the advertising. It was that it didn't provide a PC launcher of some kind so that I could download and natively play Stadia games from my PC. Game streaming is a cool idea, but that shouldn't be the only way to play a game because a flawlessly stable internet connection isn't guaranteed. And when at home, I prefer to play games natively at my computer. What has me interested in xCloud is it seems to be exactly what Stadia should have been. A service alongside a native method to play games. You have the option to stream your games from a server, but also have the ability to play them natively on a set of hardware once you're home. Xbox claims they're going to be bringing xCloud to the iPhone this summer through the Safari browser. Who knows how that'll turn out due to Apple being, well, Apple. But I hope it works out well, and I'll be following the news closely. I'm actually interested in xCloud now. Steam Link opened up a magical new world of game streaming to me. One that I never knew could have existed. I'm happy that I tried it, but more so, I'm happy that Steam Link over-delivered.